first lesson of the day is the five layers of defense. Defense. Defense offers up several menus. One of the main keys of defense is hands. Defending with your hands takes a, a serious concentration and understanding of how to stop a fighter from the outside. And that's usually defending with your hands. So whenever you're doing this, your objective is to keep your opponent in front of your hands up, being able to block, block, catch, and parry. So what we're gonna do today is go over this with the guys. One at a time, they're gonna show how they can defend with their hands, and then we'll cover the other four lessons. Let's go. Okay, so what happens is, if you got a fighter on the outside, and he's shooting the hands, we can just say, for instance, he has the length on you, and your objective is to shut him down. Take his offense away from him, so you know immediately to defend him with his hands. Early rounds, this is a key time to do it. So if he's doing it, shooting a jab, Catch, catch, parry, parry, catch. This is how you take the initiative to defend with your hands. The next method of defense is defending with your arms and elbows. That's when you're on the inside. You're on the mid range, the guy's throwing body shots, defend with your arms and elbows. Bam, boom, pop. These are methods of defending with your arms and your elbows. Remember, whenever you got a fighter, you must know immediately that gear must kick in. What type of defense should you exploit with this guy whenever he's coming with you? Especially a guy that's longer, or faster, or even stronger. You gotta buckle down and you gotta make that commitment to it. Alright? Alright, next round, your objective is to defend with the feet. So Pup, I want you to come in. All right, this guy, he's gonna come towards me and I'm gonna show you how to defend him with the feet. Whenever you have a pressure fighter, your objective is to take him and turn him and keep him moving, keep him off balance. Don't allow him to get comfortable. So you make him uneasy by putting that footwork on him. So come towards me. start to get more comfortable when you understand how he navigates himself around the ring. So you download and take down his algorithm. So if he's more plotty, slew foot, then you just give him the round and down, change direction on him, and then he'll have to keep changing his feet. If he's really, really quick, you just want to keep him at bay. He's putting a stiff arm out there on him. So when you get Putting the steel foam out there, you want to make sure that you're not going to the left because he can counter you over the top. Go right hand, boom. So you don't want to do that. Put the steel foam. to understand how easy it is to master your footwork whenever you're doing it. So practice these alleys. Hands up. Circles. Make sure you get these down. Back pedal. of the ring and you'll be in good position. Now I'm going to sit and show you how to utilize the shoulders. Got a guy with a good right hand. 
good inside fighting skills. What you want to do is use the girl. He has good shoulders, wide shoulders. Biggest key for him, if I'm throwing the right hand, he has to learn how to roll and use that shoulder. So if he throws a right hand to me, boom, roll that shoulder. Letting that right hand hit the bumper. Again, and another. But I need to keep my eye on him when I throw that shot. So a lot of people do the rolling shoulders and they kind of roll away, but they don't look. So again, boom. See, I got my eye on it. Don't shut, don't shut for me, see? Don't look at the right hand. Pop, pop, pop. That's another way to set the counter up. Again, again, again. And what I do is, when, it, when you strike the rolls, it's close enough for me to counter. Body or head. And that's key. Using your shoulders both ways. So, pop, I go here, I go here. Either way, using the range and the width of my shoulders, hiding behind them. That's another method of defense. Next method of defense is drawing the line in the sand by using the brain. You have to get into his head. You have to let him feel uncomfortable. So I psychologically have to get into his head by drawing the line in the sand. When he gets close enough, I lean forward and I position him. I look right between his eyes, just like a cat about to attack. Just like that, the first thing, his alarm goes off. He knows that I'm ready to strike. These are some of the games that you're going to play whenever a fighter is trying to come on to you. So you draw that line in the sand. But see, if I stand straight up, the fighter's going to feel like I'm easy to come on. So if I stand like this, I'm backing up. So I'm letting the guy get range and cover my ground. And I'm not trying to let him cover my ground. My objective is to keep him at bay and let him think twice before stepping across that line. So you plant your feet and you let him know, if you come in here, it's going to be something. And that's how you do it. That's how you play the mind games. You set traps for him. If he does come in there and you're setting a trap for him, your objective is to counter punch him if he throws something. So if he comes in there, he throws that jab, I already know. I want to get it over the top of the jab. Pop! As soon as he throws the jab, I'm going over the top. So you got to be willing to set the trap whenever you're playing mind games. Fighting is not a game. You got to have your skills and tap the box. Now, I hope that gave you the information you were searching for on how it looks when you're transferring and developing muscle memory so that will transfer into the boxing ring. That's our narrative over here at the School of Boxing, is to give you insight as to how do you get to that point where it looks that way inside of the ring. We truly understand the hurdles that you go through when you're learning this stuff, and it does take a lot to take it in and maximize your return of all the time you put into it. So now we will be doing this very in-depth peekaboo webinar coming up. So make sure you subscribe to the website and get locked in, register. This is one you do not want to miss and it will be one that you never will forget. When you leave out of this one, you will have clarity as how you take yourself from point A to point Z in the peekaboo style of boxing. Fundamentals, the foundation, the origin, and we will take a great look back into the development and over the years, it just gives you so much insight. So until next time, continue blessing. Remember, check in, let us know where you're from, subscribe to that website, and continue to follow us on It's Time to Box, where we make everything boxing. And make sure you check out the fight show. Next week, we will have Buddy McGirt, the legend, the Hall of Famer, one of the best to ever do it at that small weight class. Until next time, continued blessings. Special shouts out to my brothers in the School of Boxing, where it's everything boxing. So long and enjoy learning the peekaboo style. It's your time. Peace.